So this is the denim apron that I'm going to make. It's sort of unisex. It's uh, good for barbecue or for baking. And I'm going to cut out the pieces to do it. I have an apron body that I cut on the fold and I cut two side straps that are the same length as the width of the apron, which is about 38 inches. And I cut a neck strap and in my case I'm going to do two pieces and a rather large pocket that I cut at 10 by 20 inches. So I have the selvage at the top here and this is actually a facing that will eventually be put down like this and we could serge this top piece or we can just use this uh, selvage edge which is what I'm doing. And this is a stretch denim, and it has quite a bit of stretch in this direction, and a little on the diagonal, and it doesn't stretch much this way. So this isn't going to stretch that much from side to side on your waist. It's actually going to stretch up and down. And it's interesting, it has a different feel on your body than a little bit in a way more like a bias cut, because it's just it's just different. So this uh, strap for my aprons, you'll notice, is very much like the strap that I put on my purses. And that's intentional because uh, the way I do the strap, which is essentially to fold the two sides in to where they pretty much meet, and then fold it like this, and then stitch down this edge with your edge stitcher usually twice, once right near the edge and once further over. And I just feel like it hugs the contours of the body better without it looking like so many straps do where, uh, you know, the, the edges of the strap are just both forced this way. I, it may not even be true. I prefer this. And so I wanted to show you that you could take a little piece of cardboard and cut it to the measurements on screen and in the information below the video. And you could use it as a guide. Ooh. And you could use it as a guide to help you ironing your strap. My iron's just spitting up like crazy right now. To iron your strap in on both edges like this. And then uh, after you did that the whole length you could then do this. You could pin this. There are all kinds of things you do you could do to make this a more precise uh, process if that's what you like. But for me personally, here's what I do. Um, because I did all the garment sewing when I was young, I do have a pretty good eyeball of a 5 eighths and I tend to just go shoot down this whole edge ironing at 5 eighths and then I shoot down this whole edge mating it up and then I'm going to iron it one more time like this You can see that I've pressed this so that it's actually a little longer in the middle and these sides are going to be a little shorter because I've made the hem a little wider. And so when I put everything back in place, it is going to tend to have this edge, even though I'm sewing down it, not go way past this other edge. I'm using an edge foot and I've got where I can ride along this and I'm going to use a fairly long stitch about a three. I'm going to back stitch a bit. If I decide I need to I'll prop the back of my foot. I'm using a gold top.
top stitching thread of 30 weight. And I think that'll look good. Okay, so now I've I've redone my machine so that uh, I'm using this foot and I'm kicking my needle over to the right and I'm going to stitch a second line right about here. My two lines are not going to end up perfectly in the center, but I'm okay with that. So I'm going to stitch right along here and the two lines will not end up perfectly in the center, but I'm all right with that. The part where all the layers are overlapped is where there will be two lines of stitching. So I'm just going to fly through all of this. Next, the two sides and bottom of the apron need to be hemmed, and so does the top of the pocket. And to prepare for that, as you can see in the inset corner, I'm first serging the three bottom sides of the apron and then serging all four sides of the pocket. After that, I'm going to press them with lots of steam in preparation and then I will sew around from the back with my edger and then from the front with my regular foot and an edge guide. And this turns out to be a pretty nice finish. If you don't have a serger, you could pink the edge or you could zigzag it and then iron it over and stitch it and with the stitching you also could use a double needle if you don't have experience with that though you would want to practice it on a scrap first to see how you can pivot that corner and get that corner to look very nice with a double needle and then it's faster you only have to do it once I think I've been avoiding it but we really need to talk about neck straps on aprons if you're making an apron for yourself, by far the easiest, sturdiest way to do it is to just make one strap and install it in the apron at the length that is right for you, that can go over your hair even when it's fixed nice and is comfortable on you. If you're sharing an apron with someone who's a lot different size, then you might want it to be adjustable. And if you're selling aprons, believe me, you want them to be adjustable. People come in all shapes and sizes, and some people like their apron to be really sucked up to their neck, and some people like it to be really loose. D-rings are an option, and they're what I did when I sold aprons, but I'm not recommending D-rings. They're kind of a pain for various reasons. And what I'm going to do is sort of a halfway. We're cutting our straps in two pieces and we're going to install those where one is as long as possible and the other one is planned to have a three inch overlap between the two straps on one side of the of your neck and the idea there is that it's adjustable and easy to make permanent we'll pin it with a safety pin while we're working on it but when the apron is finished and we're deciding on the final fit what we're gonna do is overlap those and sew them together with our machine so that it's a nice permanent strap but then we're going to sew buttons in a row on there and that'll just be a nice little added touch anything you feel like but the idea there is that it's adjustable and easy to make permanent if that makes sense to you okay so the way we're going to construct the front top of the apron and do our facing is a little unusual <laughs> and uh, it's going to get a little bit shorter and also a little bit narrower and so that's why we're planning in this room to adjust with the three inch overlap because you may not like the way it fits when it's finished off and it's difficult to anticipate that and also properly sew 
the strap in. There are plenty of ways to do that, but I just thought this would be easy and attractive. And it would create a situation where you could make an apron and have it almost completely finished and then do a final fitting on the person, pin it where it was supposed to be finished off, and then add a, a small decorative element that personalized it, as well as making it secure. What I did was I took this to my iron and I blasted it with steam. You may be able to tell it's just a tiny bit narrower than the actual front of the apron. And this is a facing and it's sort of a self-facing, but we're gonna sew it on more like a traditional facing. And in order to do that, we're just gonna take and cut about an inch and a half or so right on the edge here. Maybe a little bit more because what we want to do is put our strap in there. And so we're going to sew it in and we are going to sew at 5 eighths. We're going to mate these up and sew at 5 eighths and then we're going to come and sew it 5 eighths all the way along here and that's how we're going to install the straps at the same time that we begin finishing off all of our edges and so the most important thing is to position this in there the way that you want it okay so I think I had okay I had this side well in and this side and I really do want to stitch pretty close to 5 eighths, so I don't want these to be too little, my little relief cuts. Okay, so this side we want as long as possible, and we're shooting for about 5 eighths of an inch here. And if you need to measure that, go ahead. And it's okay if it's not quite that much, but don't go under. It either needs to match or have a, go a little bit past because you don't really want to end partway through your strap there if you can avoid that. That would be good. And you're going to be stitching in here, and so you're going to actually be over a little ways. Another thing is that you want this strap to be straight up and down, and so putting an extra pin in it is actually not that bad of an idea because if they get uh, pulled around like that, all wonky like that, it can really affect how it's sewn at the top. And so we're going to put an extra pin in here. And then uh, we're going to stitch around this at 5 eighths. 5 eighths all the way around. So I've trimmed the straps off a little bit longer than my seam allowance with my pinking shears and if you did it so it's adjustable if we had a kink in here we could correct that just by unpinning it but uh, you're pretty much sewn in at this point if you did a single if you're doing just the single strap continuous strap I don't want to trim this because I want these extra layers to kind of reinforce my facing because I didn't apply any kind of uh, interfacing. Now I could. I could even still do it. I could put an iron on piece of interfacing right here if I wanted to and iron that on and have it uh, be part of everything. But I think this is enough with the two layers and the seam allowances. And I'm not going to trim these and grade these down. What I'm going to do with them is fold them. Let's see if we can. There's some bulk here, which I'm going to need to sew through later. But that's okay with me because I think it adds strength once I top stitch through it. And I've got this monster machine. And this is, again, a lightweight denim. Okay, so I've got this like this, and I'm going to fold it on that seam, and then I'm going to fold it on this seam, and I'm just going to kind of pinch that with one hand, 
and then I'm going to get inside and I think it's good to go ahead and get under your strap and then just turn it. And when you do that, it practically presses the whole thing out for you. And then everything is in there and I'm going to do the other side. So again, we're going to fold in one side. It might be easiest to do your strap first because that's so much bulk and then you see what you've got to deal with. And then you turn this along that edge and then you reach underneath to where you're underneath your strap and then you just turn that corner out and pull your strap up. And then see how I just went a tiny bit past each corner? I, I could have gone quite a bit further and if you did it's fine. And if, uh, if you're right on the edge, it's fine. If your strap is bound in here, you're going to have to pick that out and re-sew it. Okay, so I've got this here, and it's pretty good already, but I'm just going to press it down. And I'm going to pay particular attention to these edges, and I'm going to exaggerate the fact that this piece is bigger, and I'm going to hide this little corner in there and I'm gonna really press that well. So uh, we're gonna tip in this corner and we're gonna and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get this little hem started here so I'm just gonna push this under for a little narrow hem right there and I'm just gonna blast that area I can so a little steam and so then on this area I'm just gonna push this in and I'm gonna blast this area okay so the top is ready to go and then I'm gonna come down at the bottom, and I, I already did this and didn't film it, and so I'm going to press this in, and I just want a nice smooth line there, it, even if it's slightly, not perfectly gradual there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here, and I'm, I'm going to actually pinch it up a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to roll this edge over. And I'm going to get on there with some steam. And I'm going to blast that. And then I'm going to hem up this edge. And as it goes higher, it's going to narrow to meet what I have at the top. Do you see that? And then I'm just going to work on this edge until I think it's pretty attractive. this in here and it sticks in a ways you want it to go in there an inch or so because you really want it to be sturdy and then I'm gonna kind of pinch it up a little so it doesn't get too big and then I am going to make this get smaller as it irons up this edge be a continuous graceful curve that gradually essentially gradually gets wider. Okay so I've pinned this and this is the kind of pinning that it's really easy to poke yourself and scratch yourself so be careful and this is the side of the apron that when it's on will be my left side strap. And so this is the seam that comes down from the neck area down to by the waist. And I'm going to start this 
this weird angle. Try to get you. I'm going to turn this with all these pins, so I'm being careful. Uh, my needle is all the way to the right so that it'll sew onto here, and I'm just going to ride the edge of it's actually the apron, but it's going to sew in the strap because, as you remember, this hem wraps around this strap. And I am going to go ahead and just do back stitching so that I'm attached really well here. Right here I have a decision to make. There are all kinds of things you can do. What I'm going to do is come a few stitches on to my piece. And then I'm going to do my best to have this be very flat. So this is what I have so far with my top stitching and now what I'm going to do is do along this edge. Okay. So here it is. It's nearly finished. I'll probably press these edges. They're a little bit ruffled. And then I'm going to uh, put it on and pin my pocket approximately where I want it. Then I'll take it off and I'll do some measurements to make sure that it's exactly positioned where it should be. And it's still a little wet from my iron. My iron is temperamental right now. Um, anyway, uh, I will double stitch the edges and then I'll do stitching up the center. And you could do a, a little thin pocket for like a pencil or a ladle handle, I don't know. But, um, you know, I always sewed these with navy thread. I just used the top stitching thread in the gold because I have it and because then I knew you could see things. To get that a little bit better, but I'm really ready to have this done. So what I'm going to do is put one piece over the other and I'm just going to stitch. Over the top of my, of my earlier stitching. I'm going to stitch across. and then I'm going to stitch back this way. There's so many ways this could be done. You know, you could do an X. 